Thank you all for tuning in to Big Mama Story Time. Story Time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment to my page. Here we go. Hi guys, thank you all for tuning in to Big Mama Story Time on today. Today I will be reading to you all Walt Disney's The Fox and the Hound. All right, guys, let's get into this. One early spring morning, Big Mama, the owl, who had been up all night hunting, was about to fall asleep when something caught her eye. It was a she-fox carrying a little cub in her mouth. The vixen quietly went up to the fence of a nearby farm and gently put her cub on the ground. Oh my goodness! She left her cub behind, cried Big Mama as she watched the vixen run away. Maybe she wants to save her baby from the hunters I heard in the forest last night. Poor little thing. Big Mama had a very kind heart. She flew down from her branch to look at the cub. The tiny little ball of fur was shaking with fear. Don't be afraid, little one, she whispered. I'll think of something. Big Mama was very wise. She would soon come up with an idea. Just then, two shotgun blasts went off in the distance. The little fox started to whimper. Hoo, 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 called Big Mama urgently. Her friends Dinky the Sparrow and Boomer the Woodpecker flew over to the fence. Who is this? asked Boomer, pointing at the little fox. Why isn't he with his parents? Asked Dinky. Big Mama quickly explained what she had seen. Did you hear those shots just now? This little fox is an orphan and we have to find him a home before something happens to him. Who lives in that farm over there? Asked Big Mama, who had an idea. A very kind elderly widow, said Dinky. Her name is Mrs. Tweed and she always feeds me in the winter. But will she want a baby fox? objected Boomer. How will we bring him to her anyhow? Do you see that laundry drying in the sun? I am sure Mrs. Tweed will come down to this end of the field to pick something up if it had blown away, said Big Mama. Follow me. The three birds flew over to the laundry line and picked some linen off it. They flew back and wrapped the cub in the linen. Then they went to a nearby tree and waited. Mrs. Tweed soon came out of the house to get her laundry. She was a little surprised that her tablecloth had blown away because there was no wind that morning. She went to pick it up as Big Mama had said she would and gasped when a tiny ball of red fur rolled out onto the field. Oh, a little baby fox! She cried as she picked up the frightened animal. Have you been abandoned? I'll take care of you. She carried the cub into the house while Big Mama, Dinky, and Boomer looked on. Pleased that their plan had worked, inside the house, Mrs. Tweed prepared a bottle of milk and holding the cub like a baby, she fed him. Since you found your way into my field and my tablecloth, I shall keep you, decided the kind old lady your name will be Todd with that she gave her new friend a hug Aww. across the street from Mrs. Tweed's farm lived a hunter car called Amos Slade the day Mrs. Tweed found Todd Amos Slade brought back a little surprise for his old hound chief here is a friend and student for you said Amos Handing him a mysterious bag, I trust you will take care of him and teach him how to hunt. His name is Copper. Copper was an adorable little puppy. What am I going to do with the puppy? Growled the grumpy chief. 
Chief was a courageous hunting owl. He had hunted for Amos Slade for many years, and he was very proud of the many hares, quails, pheasants, and foxes he had helped his master catch. She, Chief felt important. What about a silly little puppy like Copper amount to? You'd better obey me, growled Chief, looking mean. The little pr puppy licked the big dog on the nose. Well, as long as you obey me, added Chief, softening up, everything should work out. Copper had already won the big old hound's heart. Aw, look at that. Making a friend already. Time went by. Ty grew a little stronger and a little bigger every day. And so did Copper. One morning, when he could not find Big Mama, Dinky, and Boomer to play with, Ty ventured out of the farm into the woods. He was busy sniffing all the exciting new scents, when all of a sudden he ran into Copper, who was also out sniffing. Oh, great! Someone to play with! thought Todd, and he politely said hello. He's a funny looking dog, thought Copper, but he looks friendly. So he said hello back. Soon the fox and the hound were very good friends. Oh, you never know who your friend could be. Be surprised. They romped through the woods, chased each other down paths, and jumped into a pond together. Splash! They could not stop laughing. When it was time to go home, they vowed to spend every day together. Oh, look at them two friends. You never know who your friend is. Don't judge a book by its cover, y'all. Every day, they met and played in the woods. But one morning, Copper was not there. Todd decided to go look for him at Amos' house. He found his friend tied to a doghouse made from a barrel. He was very surprised. Mrs. Tweed never tied him up. Ty was even more surprised to find another dog a lot bigger than Copper, sleeping in a second barrel and also tied up. Is this Chief? He asked his friend, who had told him about his older companion. He must be a very kind daddy, Ty added, a little envious. He stepped up to Chief and gave him a friendly hug. But the old hound, recognizing the scent of his enemy, the fox, woke up growling. Ty stepped back confused. Why wouldn't Chief like him? Copper. Before Copper could warn his friend, Chief leaped towards Ty. The frightened little fox ran away, but Chief, fur furious, chased him through the yard, dragging his barrel with him and barking madly. The hens clucked and fluttered in all directions as Ty wove his way through them. What a racket! Amos came out of his house with his gun. He fired a shot thinking that Todd wanted to steal one of his chickens, but the little fox was running away as fast as he could. Oh, wow. Run, run. Todd leaped over the fence and tore up the road, just as Mrs. Tweed drove by, taking her milk to sell at the market. He jumped into the back of her truck and hid in between the milk containers. I know that's right. Hurry up and get in there with her. Miss, when Mrs. Tweed and Todd returned from the market, an angry Amos was waiting for them at the door. I don't want your wicked fox near my hands. Do you understand? He shouted at Mrs. Tweed. Next time, I'll shoot him. Don't you dare shoot my fox, Mr. Slade. He's a well-behaved pet, and he wouldn't go near your chickens. I'll bet you scared him, she replied firmly. Now get off my property, she ordered. I know that's right. Defend your fox. Mrs. Tweed did not know what had happened to Todd, but she could tell from his frightened, innocent look that he had done he had not done anything wrong. Amos meant what he said, though thought the old lady, I'd better keep Todd inside the house, or that mean hunter may hurt him. 
So she kept Ty inside the house with her and took him out for walks every day. Ty was soon very bored. He missed the fresh air and the fun he always, always had with Big Mama, Dinky, and Boomer. He also missed Copper and often wondered now how his friend was. One morning, Ty said to himself, I am bigger and stronger. Nothing will happen to me. I'll sneak out of the house and see Copper. He went from window to window until he found one ajar. He squeezed out through the opening and headed straight through the woods to Amos' house. Uh-oh. Okay, Fox. What a wonderful morning, he sang, skipping up the path. I can't wait to see Copper. Maybe we can play together, he thought happily. He had not forgotten about the mean cheat. So when he got to Copper's house, he carefully looked around for his friend. But there was no one there. Todd then heard a loud bang and an engine start. There were Amos, Chief, and Copper in the car driving away. Chief sat proudly in the front seat by his master, but Copper did not seem pleased in the back. Chief explained to, the, to that lazy dog that we are going to teach him to hunt, shouted the hunter. Chief growled in Copper's direction. Mm -mm. Todd watched them leave. They were going to hunt. But what did that mean? Were, were they going to chase some poor animal who had not hurt them? Copper would never do that, thought Todd. He is a good dog. He was sad to see his friend go. He ran over to Big Mama and explained to her what he had seen. What will happen to Copper? He asked her. Copper will be just fine, she told him. He will learn the track for Amos. Amos is a hunter. During the hunting season, he catches animals for food and for their furs. Copper will help him find the animals. But that's awful, Big Mama said Todd as a shiver went down his spine. Don't worry, Todd. You will be all right with Mrs. Tweed, said the owl reassuringly, and she gave him a hug. Oh, that's nice, explaining to him why the dog do what the dog does. Days flew by and winter came. Todd was lonely and missed his friend Copper very much. Every day he looked out the window hoping to see him. Then one day he saw big white feathers falling from the sky. That's snow, explained Mrs. Tweed. Soon a white mantle covered the countryside. It was cold outside. Dinky and Boomer huddled under the scarecrow's hat, which no longer frightened them. Big Mama was sleeping in the tree trunk. Everything was very quiet. Todd is lucky, said Dinky, Dinky to Boomer. He must be so warm inside. <laughs> It's cold out here, agreed the woodpecker. I know it is all that snow, y'all. Meanwhile, high up in the mountains, Copper was learning how to track under Chief's supervision. He had grown a lot and was as big as Chief. He felt the urge to hunt and had learned to recognize all different kinds of scents. Chief was very proud of his students' progress, and Amos was pleased as well. Copper will make a wonderful hound. The next hunting season will be very good, Amos told himself. Winter slowly gave way to spring, and the leaves grew back on the trees, tender and green. Flowers sprang up in the fields, and birds chirped in the countryside. Todd had also grown a lot through the winter, and he had become a very handsome fox. The first day Mrs. Tweed let him out, he ran to his friends Big Mama Dinky and Boomer. How tall you are, squeaked Dinky, and how good looking too! added Boomer, and to think he was only a little ball of fur a few months ago, said Big Mama proudly. He did grow big, y'all. Wow. Look what time does. 
All of a sudden, a loud rumbling noise broke the countryside. Ty ran to the roadside to see. Amos, Chief, and Copper was driving up the road. This time, Copper sat in the front seat next to his master and Chief was in the back. Copper is back, cried Ty with joy. I'll go see him tonight. Watch out, Todd. Copper is a grown hound now. He's learned how to hunt, warned Big Mama. Mm -hmm. Be careful now. When people leave, they sometimes change. Don't worry, Big Mama. I'll be very careful, replied Todd confidently. I'll wait to see Copper until Chief is sound asleep. That night after Mrs. Tweed had gone to bed, Ty slipped out of the house. He ran over to Amos' house. Copper immediately recognized his old friend, but he was not happy to see him. You have to go, Todd. I am a hound now, and I hunt foxes. You are not safe here, he warned the fox. But I'm not just any fox, to Copper. I'm your friend protested Todd. I'm sorry, but I can't be your friend anymore. I can't help it. I was born to hunt your kind. That's the way it is, said the hound firmly. Todd was very disappointed. He could not understand why Copper did not want to be his friend anymore. Aw. It's okay. A howl stopped him short in his thoughts. Chief had awakened. Smelling the fox, the old hound started to bark, pulling at his chain to free himself. Ty leaped away and started to run. He remembered only too well how Chief had chased him once before. Then three gunshots went off in the night. Ty panicked. Amos would shoot him if he saw him. All of a sudden, he remembered how angry the hunter had been at him. The fox zigzagged through the field running as fast as he could. Go ahead, Fox, hurry up, hurry up! Todd was so afraid that he lost his way. He climbed a little hill and skidded down the slope. Quickly, he slipped underneath a pile of lumber next to some railroad tracks. He was painting and shaking with fear when Copper came up to him. Amos and Chief are coming after you. Run that way, said the hound, pointing up the tracks to a bridge. I've led them the other way. I don't want them to find you. Good luck. With that, Copper left. Todd was happy that Copper was his friend after all. He ran up the railroad tracks as his friend had told him with lightness in his heart. That's what's up. Go ahead. But a nasty surprise awaited him at the bridge. Chief had not been fooled by Copper's diversion. When he saw Todd, the hound started to bark triumphantly. All of a sudden, a thundering sound shook the bridge. A train was coming at high speed. Todd instinctively flattened himself between the rails, but Chief was not so lucky. He desperately tried to jump to the side, but he fell off the bridge into the ravine below. Ty was terrified as the train passed over him, but the train went by and he was not hurt. The fox slowly made his way to Mrs. Tweed's farm, hoping that Chief would be all right. Oh man, Chief, he looked like he knocked out, y'all. Y'all see him over there in the corner? On the way home, he thought Big, he thought big Mamas was right. This is a dangerous world for a fox to live in. But she was wrong about Copper. He is my friend after all. The thought cheered him up. But Copper, who had found Chief in the ravine, was filled with anger and confusion. As he licked his friend's wounds, waiting for Amos to fetch them, he started to blame Todd for the accident. I will revenge you. He told Chief, I won't allow Todd ever to hurt you like this again. He's a fox, and I hunt foxes. They're not my friends. Why did I ever let him get away? When Todd came back into the house, he slipped into his foster mama's arms for comfort. She soon found out where Todd had been. Someone was banging on the front door. It was Amos, and he was very mad. Your stupid fox almost got my hound killed, he screamed, shaking his fist. You have no right keeping a mean wild animal in your home. Mr. Slate, you are mean and wild. Leave my fox alone, shouted back Mrs. Tweed. 
Good night. The hunter walked away, swearing revenge. Mrs. Twee was disturbed by what Amos had said. I am sure Todd wouldn't hurt a soul, she thought. But Todd is a fox, and foxes are supposed to live in the woods, not on farms. I can't keep him inside the house all the time. He needs to roam in the woods. That's in his nature. What should I do? Mrs. Tweed wanted two things. She wanted Todd to stay alive, and she wanted him to be happy. She decided to take him to a wildlife sanctuary nearby. No one was allowed to hurt animals there, and Amos would have to leave Todd alone. The next morning, she brought her little friend there, took off his collar, and said goodbye. Now be good she told him i hope you make a lot of friends in the woods and don't be sad you'll be very happy here after mrs tweed had gone todd felt very sad he couldn't understand why he had been taken away from his friends and his home what will i do now he thought sadly as he walked into the strange forest it's okay todd Amos Slade watched Mrs. Tweed come back from the wildlife sanctuary alone. He could not see Todd anywhere. Slyly, he went up to the farm. Where, it, where is Todd? He asked the old lady. Todd won't bother you anymore, Mr. Slade. I've taken him to the wildlife sanctuary, she replied unhappily. Amos ran back home. That wicked fox won't get away. He thought, I can't hunt in the sanctuary, but I've got an idea. He took out some tools and made a trap as Copper looked on. He will catch that fox with this Copper, he told his hound. He'll step into this and snap. It'll close on his legs. Wait till Chief sees this. The old hound was resting with his hurt leg in a bandage. Copper, Copper snarled his approvement. Mm, mm, mm. Meanwhile, in the wildlife sanctuary, Big Mama was very busy looking for Todd. The owl had found out what had happened from Dinky and Boomer, and she was very worried. What would happen to Todd? He did not know how to survive in the forest because he had always lived on the farm. She looked and looked but could not find him. Then she ran into a beautiful she-fox. Her name was Vixie. Have you seen a handsome and kind fox around? Big Mama asked her. No, I haven't, replied Vixie. But I'll help you find him if you like. So Big Mama and Vixie set out to find Todd. Todd was not very far away. He had spent the night curled up in the curve of a branch, as he had seen Big Mama do. But it wasn't very comfortable, and he had not slept very well. He was having miserable thoughts. When he turned around to get more comfortable, he slipped off the branch and landed right on top of a badger who was coming out of his burrow. Ouch! Go home, snarled the badger. I wish I could, but I don't have a home anymore, said Todd politely. Well, you can't stay with me, snorted the unfriendly animal. Oh, man. You gotta be mean. <laughs> Todd sadly walked away, longing for his friends. Well, will I go now, he thought. There must be a place for me to live. How I wish I were back at the farm. He followed the path through the woods, dragging his tail on the ground. It was Big Mama who saw him first. Look, Vixie, there he is, cried the owl. Relieved, Vixie let out a gas. She had not expected Todd to be so handsome. He is a handsome little fox, okay. Todd heard her cry and turned around, hoping to see a friendly face. When he saw the lovely sheep fox, his face lit up. Wow, he thought, how beautiful she is. 
Then he saw Big Mama. What a surprise! Big Mama, is that really you? He cried. The owl gave him a big hug. I am so happy to have found you, she said. This is Vixie. I hope you can become good friends. Ty blushed. He had already fallen in love. She is beautiful. Look at her getting herself all ready. He's so traumatized. <laughs> Not even traumatized. He's just confused. <laughs> Vixie could tell that Ty was very hungry. She volunteered to take him to a stream and teach him how to fish. Big Mama called, Hoo! Hoo-hoo! Hoo! Hoo! For Dinky and Boomer, who had also been looking for Ty. They came flying and congratulated Big Mama on finding their friend. The owl introduced them to Vixie. Isn't she beautiful? Whispered Dinky to Boomer. Yes, she is. And Ty seems to think so, too. Giggling Boomer as he watched the two foxes fishing. What a handsome couple they make, he added. They do make a nice little couple, but hopefully they ain't just seeing that because that's the only other fox, y'all. <laughs> By the afternoon, Amos was now ready to catch Ty. He had made three traps. He used pliers to cut open the barbed wire that surrounded the wildlife sanctuary. Snickering with anticipation, Copper was with him, and he ordered his hound to find Todd's trap. Copper put his nose to the ground. Within minutes, he had found Todd's scent. The track led him to a tree. Amos led the traps on the path by the tree and covered them with leaves. Good work, Copper. He congratulated his hound. If that fox has been here once before, he'll be back. Let's wait for him. That's a shame. The hunter and the hound settled behind a hill. A short time went by and they heard some noise. Amos and Copper looked over the hump. Todd and Vixie were further up the path, sitting side by side. They were saying goodbye to each other. Big Mama, Dinky, and Boomer had left earlier so that the two foxes could be alone. Can I see you tomorrow? Asked Todd shyly. Vixie nodded yes. She was very happy. Oh, look at them. Ty kissed, Ty kissed Vixie goodbye and strolled back to his tree. A shiny object in the grass caught his eye. He pushed a pebble at it. The two steel jaws of one of Amos' traps snapped shut. Ty jumped back in fear. At that moment, Amos stood up. Furious that Ty had outwitted him, he raised his gun to shoot, but Ty ran back up the path after Vixie, setting off Amos' other two traps. Try to get him, uh-huh. Run, run, Ty. Ty soon caught up with Vixie and quickly explained to her what had happened. Follow me. I'll take you to my barrel. We'll be safe there. She said and started to run. Ty followed her through the woods and slipped into the opening to the, her barrel after her. But Amos had sent Copper after them and the hound saw them disappear into the ground. Ty had never been in a barrel before. This is big, he said to Vixie. I hope to raise a family here one day. She said shyly. Ty blushed. Maybe they would have a family together. He forgot about Amos and Copper and said, That would be wonderful. Just then, a strange smell crept into the burrow. What's that smell? asked Ty. It sort of smells like Mrs. Tweed's kitchen. Smoke! cried Vixie in alarm. It's smoke! They found us! Ty did not understand. When a hunter finds a burrow, explained Vixie quickly, he lights a fire at one opening. They know the smoke will drive us out of the barrel through the back exit or we will die. We're trapped. Our only chance is to jump through the fire because Amos will be waiting for us at the other exit. 
Wow. They don't even supposed to be hunting them on this. This is supposed to be their sanctuary. Ooh, enviousness and hatefulness is not good to have, y'all. It is not. Do not spread that around the world. Love everyone. I'm sorry, guys. I just had to say that. <laughs> Todd and Vixie courageously jumped out of the burrow through the fire. Vixie was right. Amos was waiting at the other exit, which Copper had found. The two foxes ran up the mountainside along a river to the safety of the woods. But Copper spotted them, and Amos, more than ever determined to get them, ordered his hounds to, his hound to chase them. Mm, mm, mm. He don't even supposed to be doing it. Copper led the chase, barking madly. He put everything into keeping up with the foxes, and Amos followed behind, proud of his hound's determination. Todd and Vixie ran for their lives and plunged ahead, jumping over rocks and weaving through the trees. Todd could not understand why his old friend was chasing after them. What would happen to them? I don't know, but he definitely looked highly upset, y'all. Luck was on their side. They leaped across the river from stone to stone and darted through a meadow. Copper and Amos soon followed, but they ran straight into a huge grizzly bear who was for foraging in the field. The bear had not seen many humans before and was angry at the intrusion. With a great roar, he raised himself on his hind legs and towered over the hunter. I know that's right. Probably didn't do it to save him, but shoot. Amos dropped his gun and let out a scream of panic. Bears were dangerous when they had been disturbed, and Amos was afraid. As you should be, Amos. That's what you get. Told y'all, angriness and enviousness, that stuff, it don't, it don't bring nothing good to you. As he started to run away, he stepped into an old trap, long forgotten on the ground. The trap closed on his foot with a loud snap. Amos screamed with pain and fell to the ground. Mm -hmm. The bear started to move closer, furious that the intruders were not leaving his territory. Amos desperately tried to get the trap off his foot. Copper bravely stood between his master and the wild animal, barking and growling, but the bear was not afraid. When Copper attacked, he swept the dog off the ground with his huge paw. Amos screamed again, hoping to scare the bear away, but the grizzly, satisfied that the hound lay unconscious, turned towards the hunter again. Uh-oh. And you ain't got your hound to protect you no more. When Todd heard Copper's barking and Amos screams, he stopped. Vixie, listen. I think something awful is happening to Copper and Amos, he said, alarmed. I must go back and find out. Vixie was surprised. How can you be so concerned with them after they tried to kill us? We're lucky to be alive. I think we must get as far away as we can. I can't, Vixie. You go ahead. I can't abandon Carpa because he was my friend, said Todd, and he headed back to the meadow. Be careful, called Vixie after him. When Todd reached the meadow, he was horrified. An animal ten times larger than Copper loomed over his friend. Copper was trying to get back on his feet, but he was still stunned by the bear's blow. Amos lay on the ground in pain. Todd watched the huge beast move heavily towards his friend and quickly thought, the only way I can help is if I take advantage of my speed and size. Mm, he finna help his friend, even though his friends was out there trying to kill him, y'all. Regardless of how mean someone is to you, do not change who you are for no one. Continue to be who you are, regardless, even if they are who they is. You never know why they are, why they are. Why they do the things they do. Todd darted in front of the bear who, had, who then stopped short. 
Trying to figure out what had crossed his path, the fox spun around and jumped on the animal's back and bit his ear. The bear roared, but before he could shake off his attacker, Ty was nipping at his ankles. Amos couldn't believe his eyes. The bear was raving mad now, and when he saw the little red fox ahead, he took off after him. Ty led him away from Copper and Amos towards the river. Look at him using his little smallness. Like you can't catch me as fast as him. <laughs> At the river, Ty stepped onto an old tree trunk, reaching over the trunk turbulent rapids. The bear followed him out over the water, convinced he had cornered his prey, but the trunk rotted by age and the water gave way with a terrible crack. Both the bear and the fox plunged into the torrent below. The bear crashed into the water with a bellow and fell silent. Ty swam to the bank and hoisted himself onto the ground. He was exhausted. He sure looked exhausted, child. He did a lot, though. When he looked up, Amos loomed over him with his shotgun aimed at him. Todd stared back in disbelief. He had saved the hunter's life. Would Amos shoot him after all? The fox was too exhausted to move. He lay still resigned to his fate. Just as Amos was about to fire, Copper jumped in front of his friend. He was grateful that Todd had so courageously saved their lives. If Amos shoots you, he will have to shoot me too, said the hound to his friend. That's what's up. Aww. Copper looked up at his master and let out a little bark. Amos was confused. He thought a minute, then lowered his gun and said, Copper, you're right. Your friend should go free. Thanks for saving us, little fox. With that, he turned and walked away. The animals breathed a sigh of relief. Ty followed Copper to the edge of the forest. He was happy that they were friends again. Goodbye, Copper, he said. I must run and go find Vixie. Goodbye, Todd, and thank you, called the hound after him. Oh, look at that. Saying goodbye to a long ago friend. When Amos left the sanctuary, he headed straight to Mrs. Tweed's farm. She was very surprised to see him. You were right, Mrs. Tweed, he told her. Your fox is awful nice. He explained to her everything that Ty had done. The old lady beamed with pride. She was happy to know that Ty was safe. Shall I take care of your foot? She volunteered. Amos was delighted. He was beginning to like the widow after all. Aw, look at them. They probably become friends themselves. Never know who your friend will be. He'll be the oddest person you ever know. Amos and Mrs. Tweed became very good friends. See y'all look. Chief wounds healed with time and the old hound forgave Todd after he heard that the fox had saved his masters and Copper's lives. And I thought all foxes were bad, he would say in disbelief. Copper often thought of his brave friend and wondered how he fared in the woods. I don't blame you. I will too. <laughs> Todd and Vixie were very happy together. They often sat on the cliff overlooking the valley and wished their friends below much happiness. Do you know what the two most beautiful things in the world are? Todd once told Vixie. Love and friendship. So true, y'all. So true. She agreed. And they lived happily ever after all right guys i love that book i mean i really love that book y'all that was walt disney's the fox and the hound i hope you guys enjoyed this book just as much as i did because i really did enjoy this book 
Alright guys, thank you all for tuning in to Big Mama Story Time. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my videos if you haven't done so already. And again, I just want to thank you all for your support. I really appreciate it. And I'm trying to get these videos out. It's just a lot going on right now. It's probably um, taking me once in a while I don't be able to get it out. But trust me, I'm coming back. I'm coming back to <laughs> to get all of these out. Um, to get these books out to you all. Um, all right, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Bye.